How many people by show of hands believe that this is a non-photoshopped? <laughs> this is real. This grizzly bear is an actor. We used to use this grizzly bear to teach stress inoculation to Red Bull athletes. We would pay this actor to come and scare our Red Bull athletes <laughs> so that they would listen and better understand this response. It worked. Maybe unethical, close your ears, but it worked. The average athlete has between nine and 13 coaches. Most of us aren't gonna have nine to 13 coaches. They have biomechanists, they have nutritionists, they have strength and conditioning, mental coaches, etc. Think about a board of directors for you. People who are vetted and valid and trusted. Maybe three or four people on your board of directors, mentors, people that you trust that can give you real feedback. And I think when you're starting to ruminate, or starting to maybe overthink, as opposed to Nike therapy, just do it, don't think about it. I think it's important to be able to use that feedback from these trusted, vetted people who can give you an outsider's perspective that isn't biased and isn't weighted in social media or competition or anything like that. Magic happens, and I'm not trying to be touchy-feely, at about six breaths a minute. So the, the best performers in the world are controlling this by what we are calling the theory of fours breathing. It's four second inhale, a slightly longer exhale, which if you do the math is 10 seconds, which is six breaths a minute. At six breaths a minute, the executive frontal lobes of the brain function better. You have a uh, immediate physiological response, which reverses the stress response as well. You have vasodilation, et cetera. So my takeaway to all of you is don't forget about one of the brain health techniques that often goes by the wayside immediately in high performance or high pressure situations or just day-to-day -day things is how is our breathing? By show of hands, how many people here have heard of Carol Dweck's growth versus fixed mindset? She's fantastic. She's a Stanford academician. She's done research. And for those that haven't heard of this, what she finds is generally, I'm gonna generalize, but generally there are two different types of mindset. Those with a growth mindset, who don't want to settle, who want to improve, who are thirsty for useful feedback in victory and defeat. And there are those with a fixed mindset. My way is good enough. I'm complacent. I don't need any feedback. I'm good to go. And the older, <clears throat> wiser we become, generally speaking, the more fixed we become. So I'm not saying we can't teach an old dog new tricks, but it requires an openness and a mindset to do that. So the earlier is always better. And oftentimes with wiser or aged and stage individuals, it takes a little bit more creativity to get them open to embedding some of these techniques. And, and we say it, right? The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. <clears throat> the second best time is today. Correct. Right? So in your book, you have some action plans hmm. for us. And so one of the big things is you tell people to create a 10-word credo, yeah. personal credo. So number one, what are examples and do you have your own? I do have my own credo. Okay. Uh, my own credo is, uh, so let's back up to what the importance of credo is. The idea of forcing with a small f a performer or an individual to work on their credo or their value identity markers is to move them away from reputation and be able to codify or build a framework around what those markers are. I've yet to see a credo of someone who says, I want to cheat, I want to be a fraud, I want to upset my neighbor. It doesn't exist. So my credo, it took years to develop, is words for me that are very important are wonder. I always want to have a sense of wonder. Stay humble, stay connected, stay hungry. I want to be non-complacent. Loyalty is a very fundamentally important word for me. I want to listen more than I speak, except for tonight, I'm sorry. So one of the things that we're doing at Center for Brain Health <clears throat> in order to bring evidence-based practical tools to people is we're doing a text challenge. So I want to encourage everybody. You, will, you, will you do it? Will you join our text oh, challenge? I'm awesome. Yeah, okay. So everybody, take out your phone. <clears throat> and everybody, you can use the QR code. So this is a seven-day challenge of very practical tips and tools that will get you started on a brain health journey. And um, yeah, we just we want you to be part of the great brain gain. Done it. Awesome. Done. awesome. Thank you.